This video is for beginners who want to learn the basics of reading and using a tape measure. Let's start by zooming in on the first part of the tape measure. The distance between the zero line and the one line is one inch. Beginning from the zero mark, we need to count 16 lines to reach the one inch mark. The distance between the zero mark and the first line is one sixteenth of an inch. The distance between the zero mark and the second line is two sixteenths of an inch. And so on. Until we reach sixteen sixteenths, which is just another way of saying one inch. This mark represents two sixteenths of an inch, but we can write this fraction another way. 2 divided by 2 equals 1, and 16 divided by 2 equals 8. This means 2 sixteenths of an inch is equal to 1 eighth of an inch. We can repeat this step to find the rest of the eighth inch markings. 4 sixteenths is 2 eighths, 6 sixteenths is 3 eighths, and so on. Some of these fractions can be simplified even more. Let's start with 2 eighths. 2 divided by 2 equals 1, and 8 divided by 2 equals 4, so 2 eighths is really 1 fourth of an inch. But most people just say it's 1 quarter of an inch. The same is true for this mark. 6 eighths can be simplified to 3 fourths. Instead of 3 fourths of an inch, you can also say it's 3 quarters of an inch. 4 eighths can be simplified to 2 fourths. 2 fourths can be simplified to 1 half. And 8 eighths equals 1 inch. There's no way to simplify the fractions further, so we're done labeling each of the markings. If you look closely at the length of each mark, you'll see some helpful patterns. Notice that the 16th inch marks are the shortest. The 8th inch marks are slightly longer, followed by the quarter inch marks. The half inch mark is the second longest and the longest marks are used for every inch on the tape. Eventually you'll want to memorize these marks, but here are some tips for reading the tape. You can use the different marking lengths to quickly find a measurement. Let's say we want to know this measurement. We know that the shortest marks are used for sixteenths. Count each of these marks using odd numbers. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 9 sixteenths. The same trick works for the eighth inch marks, as well as the quarter inch marks. Another way to think about it is to visualize the spacing between the marks. Every two marks is an eighth inch. Every four marks is a quarter inch. And every eight marks is half an inch. If we wanted to find 5 eighths, for example, we would count each 1 eighth block like this. Since there are 5 1 eighth inch blocks, this mark is 5 eighths. This is helpful for adding and subtracting measurements. If we needed to add 3 eighths to 1 eighth, for example, we could add 3 1 eighth inch blocks to get 1 half. As long as the fractions have the same denominator, you can also just add them together. 1 eighth plus 3 eighths is 4 eighths, which is really 1 half. If the fractions don't have the same denominator, you'll have to convert one of them first. In this case, we would multiply 1 eighth by 2 over 2. 2 divided by 2 equals 1. So we're not changing the value of 1 eighth, we're just changing the way it looks. 1 times 2 equals 2, and 8 times 2 equals 16. So another way of writing 1 eighth is 2 sixteenths. The denominators are now the same, so we can add the two fractions together. 3 sixteenths plus 2 sixteenths is 5 sixteenths. Let's look at a harder example. What's 3 and 5 sixteenths of an inch minus two and one eighth of an inch. Start by converting one of the fractions. Another way of writing two and one eighth is two and two sixteenths. Now we can break the problem into two parts. 
3 minus 2, and 5 sixteenths minus 2 sixteenths. 3 minus 2 is 1, and 5 sixteenths minus 2 sixteenths is 3 sixteenths. The last step is to add these parts together. The answer is 1 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. Here's the tip for dividing a measurement in half. To quickly get half of a measurement, multiply the denominator by 2. To find half of 1 quarter, for example, multiply 4 by 2. This gives us 1 eighth. This trick works because what you're really doing is multiplying the whole fraction by 1 half. Because you're always multiplying the numerator by 1, it'll always be the same, so you can just skip that step and multiply the denominator by 2. Let's see another example. To find half of 5 eighths, multiply 8 by 2. This gives us 5 sixteenths. This also works for dividing a measurement like 9 sixteenths in half, but there's a catch. Some tape measures have an extra set of markings to divide an inch into 32 equal marks. Here we can see that half of 9 sixteenths is 9 30 seconds. We don't use these tape measures for cabinet work, so on a standard tape measure, 9 30 seconds would sit here. Since there are no marks for 30 seconds, we use the terms light and heavy to describe measurements like this one. So instead of saying 9 30 seconds, we would say this measurement is a heavy quarter inch. We could also say it's a light 5 sixteenths. The same shortcut we used earlier can be used in reverse to double a measurement. To double 1 eighth, for example, divide the denominator by 2. This gives us 1 quarter. Doubling 7 sixteenths gives us 7 eighths. Let's go over the basics of using a tape measure. You may have noticed that the hook on the end of your tape measure is a little loose. A small amount of hook movement is normal, and it's meant to compensate for the thickness of the hook when taking a measurement. This ensures that whether you measure against a wall or a surface, or you measure something by hooking onto the edge, you'll get the same measurement. When measuring against a surface, gently push the tape towards it. When measuring from an edge, gently pull the tape away from the edge before reading the measurement. For extra precision, you can hold the tape and measure from the one inch mark. This is known as burning an inch. When taking a measurement this way, remember to subtract one inch afterward. The hook should be square with the tape. Avoid dropping your tape measure because this might damage the hook or other parts of the tool. If your tape measure has a bent hook or a damaged blade, throw it out and buy a new one. A new tape measure will always be cheaper than cutting something incorrectly in the shop. When taking a measurement, keep the tape parallel to the length you're trying to measure. Holding the tape at an angle like this will give you an inaccurate measurement. When taking a measurement, the mark lining up with the edge will change as you tilt your head. This is known as the parallax effect. If you try to read the tape from an angle, you'll get an inaccurate measurement. Always read the tape with your eye directly over the mark. Here's a tip for measuring the length between two surfaces. If you just need a rough measurement, you can bend the tape like this. For more accurate measurement, Start by measuring from one side and make a mark on the whole number, in this case, 10 inches. Then measure from the other side to your pencil mark. Finally, add your measurements together. We've included flashcards with this video to help you memorize the marks. As you continue using your tape measure, learning the marks will eventually become second nature. 